Hello. For a while now, I've been looking for software which will enable me to um, manage my research projects much better than I've been able to manage them so far. Whether it will be able to find me time and stop me procrastinating, I'm not entirely sure. But obviously, this is a good way of procrastinating, looking for things which will help me with my productivity. Just discovered Notion, though, recently, thanks to Steve Johns, who I speak to on Twitter, and colleague Ian Stonebridge, um, for the inspirations and for throwing around some ideas. I've started using Notion. Now, what I wanted to do is just spend 30 seconds, a minute, just going over how I've um, started to use it and what I think the potential is. And then I'd love to hear from anyone else about um, ways in which other people use it or uh, ways in which they can see that I might be able to use it. So this is the Notion software and um, it's effectively like creating your own website, your own database. There's lots of options within it. This is a home page for me. And what it is really is a central place where I can put lots of links and also start to build content. So uh, you can change the pictures at the top and because time seems quite pressing and despite this current procrastination and even now making this video I wanted to put that at the top to try and remind myself but you can put whatever you like you can change the icons and as you see first thing that comes up on the left hand side is this plus and these um, sliders so what I can do is I can the way it works is if I click that and then I can add any of these basic building blocks just below where I was just now so I can add text, I can add pages, to-do lists, different headings, which is what you see above, bulleted lists, numbered lists, oh, don't have to read it all out, but um, mentions, then we've got these databases, which I'll just touch on in a minute, which is which are really good, um, images, web bookmarks, audio files, we can embed different things, we can embed a tweet, we can embed InVision, which is part of the Microsoft Teams package now, so it's for drawing and Miro loom different um, recordings of screencasts so these different apps can be embedded table of contents templates you can see and it's so it's really it's a, it's a really good tool that is only really limited uh, limited it's limited in itself but our own imagination and the way that we structure it is is one of the main limits so if i wanted to put in a to-do list just there at the top and i can type my first task there i press return and then it's going to give me another one as well and then another one click that turns itself off can slide them up and down and there we go so uh, I'll get rid of that um, easy to remove there we go so this first thing that I've got at the top is my workflow and this is based on a board now I can change the view and I can add different views but this is based on the Kanban board principle of having um, horizontal swim lanes of um, different work and different streams either with different people or in the case of just one person then I've used it as a timeline so things that need to be done this week next week and beyond so this board here um, allows for these different cards to be um, inserted and then what I've done on this one for this particular task is, is a, a tracking and ethics application so whereas I've got things and increasingly this year I've got things in lots of different places my OneDrive, my Google, my work, my uh, wherever I've got about five different places where I'm storing things so this allows me to, um, to create links to track different projects and to direct me so that I don't have to perpetually be searching around for where I put these different files um, so that is that the um, but what you can do is, um, you'll see that this is this week, next month, and review. And I've got little um, tabs down beneath. So what I can do is I can look at the properties of them, and I can choose to show different properties or not. Now, if I show this tags one, you can see there's an extra tag inside, which um, is actually applied by the system itself. So if I take this ethics review here, and I wanted to put it in the task done section, for example, or in this case, review next month, because I'm going to... Um, bump it on on purpose and you see how it changed there that little tag because I put it in the different column if I move that one back to there and that tags changed again so those tags don't actually need to be visible but it just shows the principle of what changes I'll turn that one off so there's got there's a lot of flexibility in what we've got here um, next thing down I've got is a weekly log so that links to a different page but you can see here that I wanted to try and track the work that I do and I'm exploring this idea at the moment but that's one method and you can see there any entry into a classic calendar comes up like so. If I go back to the top page, 
Um, we've got a Gantt chart. Again, these different views, we can actually have multiple views in the same, and these are these database features. So it's the same information um, can be shown in different ways, or we can create a brand new one and put different types of information. So that's the calendar you've just seen. The timeline is the Gantt chart that you've got there. Kanban boards on there, the table which is the raw data, and you can see the pictures just coming up above my head. What I've also done is created pages here. So um, but actually, this te this template that I'm using is from uh, Sterling Osborne, and I'll point you towards his resources in a minute. And then I've adapted it, so that's the other person who's inspired me to to create this. So this is a separate page, and what you see I've added in here is um, hyperlinks to resources that I already have. So these are pages on my website, and just as an example, you can see they f slot into a page just like that, which looks nice if I've got text as well. And, but then there's a there's an article. Maybe we could use this to review articles. And then you've always got that link at the top there, which is easy to access. But what you can also see is that by taking this um, slider, we can also move that up and down. And I've added a comment to each one, which gives it a kind of title. But you can see there, this is the way that we present them is um, is very flexible. And I go back to my research workflow, which is the top page. Um, another feature I like is this. Um, I've already got existing documents that I've been using for quite a while. But these are links to those Google Documents, so again, they're all in the same place. And it might, might be that I start to transfer stuff across, but for now, as I move from one method potentially to another, or whether this one sits across, I can just insert those links there, and that's fine. They are now part of that project. I've got other research projects on there, so I think that is, again, just more links to different resources that I know I have, and hopefully will be easier for me to find. I've also used that gallery feature here, those kind of say motivational quotes, those reflections that I want to be key principles as I, I, want, I want, these are like post-its on my computer. Um, and there's other ways of writing journals, um, storing information. What I've tried to do is keep it to my research so that um, that, it, that I don't go to one single place for all of my work because I want this, I want that degree of separation. One example of a page that I've used is this, um, just for my own benefit, is things that are related to Notion. And here's this video of Sterling Osborne, which I used to um, inspire me to create this. And I used the template that was available on that video. So I, um, I definitely recommend looking at this that video and uh, and then looking at the links that Sterling has uh, really generously put on there. And it is possible to share templates as well, which is another good feature. Um, I think that's it really. Oh, I've got one more. So I've got uh, I set up a quick notes one, which um, which because I've downloaded it onto my phone. This is the on my phone. This is the page that comes up first of all. And so the theory, although it's not necessarily worked yet, the theory is that these notes, once written on my phone, will then be readily available once I'm in my research workspace. So I hope that's of some interest to people to see what is possible in some software. I've not found there are there's um, obsidian we've looked at we've looked at Rome um, this I've been working in Google for a while Google keep and there does seem to be a, a lack of a perfect note taking software but this is definitely seems to have changed uh, added value to what I already had I was already quite happy with Google Drive and searching within it but this creates a, a, a canvas a platform where I can move things around and create links so I hope you find this useful. If you've got any other ways of using this that you can see might be possible or if it's inspired you to use it or if you want to find any more then just get in touch with me. Thanks for watching.